He said they're going to Montreal. Yeah. To play in the Invitational group stages. I know. It's astonishing, isn't it? I'm in Tarot. This is Kickstar. We have Black Dragons versus Ints on the docket for match number three. We'll bring up the rosters for you, and we'll go through. Both of these teams that will be competing here now, Black Dragons, are on the precipice of, uh, of greatness. They're not too many points out of the top four. Now, you still got some work to do. You saw a victory today from, uh, from Immortals, who started the day off in second place, if I recall correctly. And then a victory from uh, Team Liquid, who started off in third over Ninjas in Pajamas, who were in first. So here's your Black Dragons roster. They've looked okay. They actually defeated FaZe in BR6, if I remember correctly, and they're going to be going up against the bottom-placed team who have not been having the greatest of seasons so far. Ints Esports. So Black Dragons so far, two wins, two draws, two losses, and Ints, five losses and a draw. So, yeah, you know, they've, they've been having a bad season. Without a victory so far? Yeah, one point. One. That's so... At least they have a point on the board. The last team to get on the board in terms of the scoreboard was Rise Nation yesterday and North America's final play day. Mm -hmm. Every other region has at least one. But still no victory here in Latin America. Four ints. They got an opponent that seems to be heating on up in Black Dragons. You might be wondering, at some point, we're going to need to do the map veto. And we'll just grace your screen with its presence. Bring up the map veto. Ints will be starting on defense. Black Dragons will be starting on attack. Predictions? Border or coastline? Consulate, maybe? Consulate. Hey, I was hey. right. Well, I mean, you literally picked between the five. That, 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 You cannot just at that. That, 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 Consulate. I was right. You got me on that one. <laughs> Chop busted, fellow adult. Here adult? What? I don't know what you're talking about. community reference. Michael, we're going to have some work to do in the offseason. Speaking of community. I don't know what that is. How do you think? This match is going to go. I would imagine probably going to be Black Dragons favored 75 to 17 percent in favor of BD. No surprises there. Popular organization. Team that's not too far out of the top four. They've been looking pretty good. Ints still searching for their first victory, as we noted. That usually suppresses your numbers in any given poll. Yep. Yep. Yeah, with one point, I mean, they have not been having an impressive season. They managed to get that one point from an impressive team. Mm -hmm. But... Generally, Ince is the punching bag in LATAM right now, and they need to, you know, start winning some matches to change that, but nobody's going to expect them to do it against Black Dragons, who have been, yeah, having a mixed season, but uh, not a terrible one. And we talked about this earlier, how even the, you know, the median teams in LATAM can punch pretty high, yeah, and they're going to do really well against, you know, Ince. Worth noting that matches one and two, contained all of the teams from this region that will be going to the Invitational. So that means in this matchup in Black Dragons versus Ints and then Red Devils uh, versus Pain Gaming, which will send us off for our final match of the day, all of these teams will have a bit of a prolonged break until Season 9 returns. So this is an ample opportunity for these teams to be experimenting with possible changes. Keep in mind, rosters will be unlocking during this break. So if teams feel that there's trouble in terms of their team roster, they could make changes. That's your time to make roll swaps. That's your time to change up the operators and strats that you have. Maybe pick up a coach. Maybe fire a coach. And maybe make some changes to the people who are competing for your team. So let's head into Consulate. Match number three will get underway. First ban will go to Ints. And they'll take out a Blackbeard. All right. Not terribly surprising. I mean, we're playing <laughs> Black Dragon Space Bar. We're playing on, uh, <laughs> we're playing on Consulate. So <laughs> I don't know why that's like that. Somebody must have just like accidentally while he's entering it just ha accidentally thumb on the space just bar. fell asleep. He on forgot. The... He forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, yeah, no, that, that's not surprising. So the reason Blackbeard wouldn't be spreading here, it's consulate. This is probably one of his best maps overall. It doesn't really matter who you're playing against, but yeah, it, I yeah, I'm not surprised they got uh, it taken away from Black Dragons. Now, Thermite also going to be gone. Um, so that's going to make defending the basement a whole lot easier. And uh, generally. The Thermite Ban is going to put that as the primary bomb site downstairs. And uh, Echo also being eliminated. Kind of curious. I mean, if you're going to be focusing on a downstairs ta or downstairs hold, I would imagine you want Echo in your corner, but you can do it without him. It's just uh, he's a very useful operator for that basement. 
Once again, we have gone through three matches now without Maestro being banned, given the fact that his pick rate is as high as it is and his ban rate is as low as it is. I mean, Parker, I'm telling you, it's a Ladam thing. The good operators that they want to play, they just don't want to get rid of. Right. It's 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 a weird... It's, it's opposite to what most other regions do. Like, for example, Europe, if they just have an operator they think is too good, they're just going to get rid of it instead of keeping it in play so that they can play it. But, curiously, Ansar at least for the moment, not bringing that maestro, so. Curious. You have your six pick opportunity here. Wow. There it is. Would you look at that? Surprise, surprise. It's a maestro. Did I Black sell one of the vowels in his names? What, where? His name? Wait, where is his, I, I didn't see He it. dropped the A. Hang on. He dropped the A and the C. Protect your bombs from being diffused by I'm not gonna attackers. see it for a while, am I? No, no I'm not. Is it just I? B L K It's like I B L K S yeah. or Z? Okay. Z. 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 Michael, you have British heritage at Z. Hi. Thank you. All right. Starting on Garage, not really much of a surprise. Given that Thermite is off the board, it's going to necessitate one or two of these hard breachers being ran. Keep in mind that Maverick is not banned, and Hibana will need to be run here on Consulate pretty much every single round. I say football. You know? Yeah. I say billiards. Billiards is correct. Yeah, but no, because like in America, a lot of people call it pool, just pool table. And if you look into like, if you listen to American team comms, it's quite a dive into cultural references. Just say pool table instead of billiards. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like we get a rehost. Cool. Cool. Um, we're actually into the action phase, so it's gonna have to wait. I think for the next round, this should play out. It it, it straight up should play out, but we'll see what the admin call is. That's not our decision to make. All right, well, it looks like we're going to get a rehost. There we really? Go. What? Admins get the final say. Admins get the final say, but all right, then. Well, decision has been made, so rehost is in, and we'll just wait to find out what happens. I like how their logos complement each other. Look at that. They do look really nice. They Together, yeah. They look yeah. really... You, you feel like you could put, like, the ints right where it says dragons, and it would actually look really nice. Yeah, I mean, I they... feel like that would fit, yeah, like, it, thematically. It would. It absolutely yeah. would. I agree. Mm. So we're gathering information on what exactly is going on. Mm. So we, we do not speak Portuguese, so we don't know what they said in the chat. I'm sure, um, if you uh, do speak Sem Portuguese... Sim means yes, doesn't it? Uh, it's uh, Sim. Sim means yes. Yeah, yeah. and... Okay. I'm trying to remember no now. Oh. Oh! She taught me this. I don't know it. That's okay. I know uh, obrigado is... Thank you. Yes. All right, let's and focus on the bands here, say They say, like, Janata. Okay. I know uh, that one, too. Let's focus on the bands here. The bands. Blackbeard, Mira, Thermite, and Echo. You start immediately on the garage downstairs. There's a bandit available. There's a mute available to you. Are you all right? I'm fine, Parker. How are you? I'm I'm well. The bandit's not going to get played. Waiting to hear back on why I was a rehost. Yeah, we're, we're waiting on that. But yeah, yeah the bandit's not going to get played because uh, you know it's uncommon, mm -hmm. even on the basement, um, especially with the lack of a mute. The is, a mute is in vogue right now. Yeah, the mute is in vogue, so people mm -hmm. are going to be playing that nine times out of ten. Yeah, the the lack of the thermite. You don't really. I mean, you can bring the the bandit. The, the Habana is always going to be there, unless they know you can't defend the basement. So right. But the holes that you can open in the garage with Habana are just just not enough. Just not enough for real execution in through garage. It always turns into a bottleneck, and it hurts to attack that, that floor without a Thermite. So the Thermite ban, I really do think, is probably the most influential here. Mm -hmm. BD committing to that uh, defense side. But it also, you know, it's curious, because they're the ones banning the Thermite, but they're starting on attack. And also, the most played operator on attack True. in Latin America as well. True. He's the one who gets banned out. Thermite Fact. being played so religiously on border. Coastline obviously falling by the wayside. We saw Habana a couple times from Ninjas in Pajamas on their attack. Obviously wasn't very successful. Didn't really matter. The hard breach wasn't necessarily the issue because on attack, Team Liquid won four rounds hard breacherless. So you don't really need it on Coastline. But on Consulate, there are a couple teams that can pull off breacherless strats. It doesn't really happen all that often. So we're... So apparently... It was an audio issue, so it's it's okay. So it was an audio issue, that. and the admins, the admins have called that it was a, a rehost. That is fine. Um, 
I think it was a miscommunication and misunderstanding of something else, but mm -hmm. it happens. Happens from time to time. Admins make the final decision. Uh, it looks like we're almost. Yeah, they're all in the lobby. And so everybody should be able to. They're calling out the readies. Oh, wait, wait. I think we just got a, a wait, so. Like I said, I really wish we spoke Portuguese. Me too. Mm -hmm. I No, I'm going to learn it, though, Parker. I have I to. I know, Michael. I'm, I'm aware. I, you keep you keep mentioning it. It'll be like three years from now, but I'm going to learn it. <laughs> It'll take you some time. But a lack of immersion, hey, you'll get your footing eventually. And we're just going to check and make sure everything is good, and then we're going to be going into consulate here for Ooh. our third match between Black Dragons and Ints. And hey, you know what the remake did allow us to do? They got rid of all the spaces after the Black Dragons name. So it's Black Dragons without any spaces afterwards. He's right. Mm -hmm. It's just Black Dragons now. Yeah. It's fantastic. All right. So, it's going to be basement and the same everything. Yeah, you got to go with the same lineup here. It's part of the agreement that when you go to a rehost, you have to go to the same site and you're going to use the same six pick. It was originally a pulse, but it was an alibi. It's still going to be a maestro. It was a maestro on Drunks' side of things, though he originally showed the pulse. Yeah. That's... Well, whatever. Also, uh, I saw the well. typing in the chat, and I was like, "Not another rehost, <laughs> please!" <laughs> I saw, no, saw it. I, just, not, I didn't look down. I saw not it. Over good this. luck, good luck, have fun, and I was like, yeah. "No, please." So, I'm just weird that we got the first one, but it happened. Now, set up downstairs. The Habana is being brought. The Thatcher as well, which means the mute jammers that will be put on the garage wall are going to be ineffectual, and they are easy to take out. You cannot mute ju juggle. I mean, you can. You can try to mute juggle. It's just not gonna work. It's tough. Yeah. Um, so it's gonna be pretty easy for the garage to get opened up by the attackers. But what can they really do with three Habana holes? Also, if they commit themselves to opening up just the garage, then they're gonna limit themselves there. So they won't be able to open up the drop downs, which are being reinforced right now by attacks. So it's an option for the attackers. So they're gonna have to figure out what they want to do. No matter what, you're limited though. Without a thermite here. This is the only site really that limits you on this uh, on ha not having a thermite. You guys can't see it because the uh, overlay is non-existent. But thermite was banned. It was banned by Black Dragons, mm -hmm. which is again curious because they start on attack. Well, I mean, there's a reason. There's a reason well, for that, right? There's yeah, I'm sure they're going to be comfortable intentional. attacking. Intentional. Yeah, they're going to be comfortable attacking the bottom yeah. floor without a thermite, obviously. But it is it, again still going to limit them, and Ince is going to take full advantage. It could be a bait, though. It's possible that BD that, uh, knows something we don't, and they have some crazy effective strategy for attacking the bottom floor. And only time will tell on that one. Uh, Ince is roaming pretty heavily upstairs. In fact, I think they only have like one or two anchors right now. Mm -hmm. It's very dangerous for them to be playing this way. But on consulate, you do need to have a presence above the site or below the site, depending on where you're playing throughout the round. I mean, it was. What match was it that we were watching? Uh, we were watching yesterday on consulate. It was. Uh, I, I think know. it was the. It was either the Rogue EXG match or the Space Station Rise match. These matches all do tend to blur together. Um, yeah. Understand. After you know, because uh, believe it or not, I casted both those matches same day. <laughs> Crazy that Parker. Right. Because it was like I started the morning. Here we casted from 2 a.m. until like 7 a.m. doing NA, and then we were immediately back in studio for 8 p.m for Latin America, so there you go. And so. believe it or not, all but four of these matches, same month. Right? Crazy. Wild, yeah, because we had the one Latin America play day. Um, but other than that, I was going to say that you basically avoid the site at your own peril. And I believe it was the EXG Rogue matchup, because at one point Achieved was just in the middle of the site. Oh man, that is an easy to read entry. Ion, what are you doing? Boar will be able to throw up the Nitro Cell. So something that Fnatic did against Ninjas in Pajamas at the Paris Major was if you have pre-established patterns for soft destruction, it's very easy to catch you off guard. If you entry the same way and do the same soft destruction time and time again, you get read like a book. And then they blow the book up, actually. That's exactly what happened there. Eh. It's in a good position here to hold this out. Dix Carousel having been detonated at this point, the drops are open. So it was a calculated decision by BD to go for the drop downs instead of the garage panel. They still have the vault hole, looks like, in the garage panel using two of those Habana charges there. It looks like they're setting up to rush their way in. But again, this bottleneck is going to work against them. There's plenty of Ince players here to stop this push. On yellow stairs, Dud's going to take out Iblox, who has lost a few letters. 
Duds unable to hold on to the garage push as he's pushed back thanks to the smoke grenades. Intact though, gonna take out Hugzord. Panico from behind will take out Intact, and it's just a back and forth here. Duds playing by pipe, such a pivotal position. GDN though is gonna lose to Yuk all the way from Kitchen Door. And Inst will take this first round. Again, thanks to that amazing bottleneck to the lack of thermite. And good reading, good coordination there through the soft wall all the way in the staff area. It also looked like the Habana of GDN just did not land a single shot. Now, mind you, there's a very small magazine on that Type 89, so you don't have a lot of opportunities to be able to connect, but still, didn't hit. Didn't look like they hit more than one or two at a time. So a successful garage defense will force Ince to go somewhere else. They'll go up to that second floor to console, office, and meeting room. Now, you also hear us use the term projector to describe meeting room quite a lot, because there's it's because there's a projector in there. What was that? Hmm? Hmm? I have no idea what you're talking about, Parker. All right. There is a projector up there. Black Dragon's six picking off of the Habana to go with the Capitao. So foregoing a hard breacher, bringing soft destruction in the sledge, the buck, and the ash. And then Hugzord rocking the Finca. So four frag grenades that will be available on the board. It will be very important that Duds uses his utility well. Establishes those ADSs in positions where all these massive amounts of projectiles and throwables that will be coming out on behalf of Black Dragons can be caught. Okay. On, Black, on Black Dragon's side, though, that Capitao, he manages to go right through the ADSs undetected. So that'll be a good opportunity to get these fixating bolts down. Cut off rotates into the site. Cut off rotates out of sight, most importantly, and also be able to use the smoke to obscure the site as the only set of smoke grenades that are available as there appears to be a bit of a log jam here will be on behalf of the Capital with those two smoke bolts. Man, I remember when uh, Capital came out and everyone was so outraged that his bolts went past Jaeger ADSs without getting caught. He also had, but, he also had frag grenades. And his gun was amazing. And his gun was amazing. And for yeah. a period of time, Capital was actually the second most picked operator on attack. He was holding an 80-something percent pick rate through the season that he debuted Yeah. because he was an absolute monster. But Parker, I look back and I'm like, <laughs> we were outraged about that. Maybe you compare it. And now we have an operator <laughs> who shoots Tomahawk cruise missiles off of his drone over the map. Yeah, as soon as the re re rework comes in, yeah. that'll be the new line. Fun stuff. But, you know, anyway, uh, Black Dragons setting themselves up for a B attack. And that makes sense considering they have the Capital. I think it's going to assist them quite a lot with this as well, as she's proven well, recently for down. many regions to specific, well, mostly for LADAM, but also for a few teams outside of LADAM, like for example, Dark Zero, to be a powerful operator and well utilized, I would say. ADS is being cleared out there thanks to the. EMP from Thatcher. Ion looking to set up a grenade. He's just waiting for his opportunity, though. Waits for that second EMP. After it comes out, the grenade goes in, and it lands. Great job there to Ion and Pitico to communicate and coordinate, taking out intact on Yellow Stairs. Now that they have Yellow Stairs control, they can turn this into a B attack. Though, it's important to note that there is a full reinforcement set inside of the B closet, which means, oh, actually, a correction, there is not. There's, in fact, a very unreinforced wall, which means potentially if the Buck of Skeleton Key... Buck of Skeleton Key? That's all right, it happens. Buck of, no, I'm committing to that. Buck of Skeleton Key, that's actually where he hails from. If the Buck of Skeleton Key gets onto the yellow stairs, he is going to be able to open up that wall and do quite a lot of damage onto any anchors potentially in the B-side. Yes, the proud Canadian village of Skeleton Key. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Canadian. He can speak with authority. I, here on the yellow stairs, he's got a frag grenade in hand. But he's just kind of in no man's land right now and doesn't really have much information. Panico down below will be establishing a flank drone so that you don't have to worry about getting pressured from Piano. But it's still a dangerous position to be in. Good operator to have yourself in that location, though, because the skeleton key can just tear through anybody trying to push up yellow stairs. But that hinges on someone being able to push on up. There goes what appears to be the last frag grenade from Ion. He's going to cut through Yuke. So swift entry. 30 seconds and you can hear Capitao doing good work. Boar gets forced off of Yellow Stairs and Duds is there just to try and help out. But Duds also knows that there's somebody playing on Repel on this window of bathroom. We'll have to work against it. It's another kill for Ion as he's collecting quite a bit. Duds will jump out, take out Panico, but oh, the Claymore from Panico from the grave as they will essentially trade each other off. Ion pulls out the pistol, a swift 4K. And it's the Claymore that will rob Ion of every single kill on the board. And Black Dragons will answer back after a disappointing push on the garage. will be tied up one apiece. It also sounded like the Diffuser went down 
the very final second as well. I believe you are correct, sir. Thank you. Do you also hail from Skeleton Key, Parker? No. Where I, from? Hail, I hail from North York, which is now a part of Toronto. North York? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Toronto used to be called York back in the day, but then there was a city that was called New York, and it was fancier, and it was nicer. Long time gone to Constantinople. I don't understand how that would be what pops into your brain. What's well, a song about how they changed the city of, or the name of a city? I'm aware. Yeah, I mean, they changed Different. the name of your city too. Got it. That's uh, true. I mean, it you know, mm -hmm. correlates a little. That's true. Somewhat, kind of. All a right. Bit. Defenders Round number three. Bombs from being Is it? And back Packers. upstairs, we will see in Sco. Look at that. Yeah, they. There's always good strategizing here because their lobby is still very much available. Opportunity to go to that first floor. There's also Teller's Archives, if need be. Now, we did see one instance of Teller's Archives yesterday. Huh. Yes. Huh is a good way of putting it. It came in the Rogue Rise Nation game. In fact, we actually saw it three... No. Where is it here? I'm looking at the wrong one. We saw it once? No, it came in the Rogue EXG matchup. My apologies. Uh -oh. Not the Rogue Rise. It was EXG that they played against. We saw it one time. We saw it one time. Mm -hmm. And it did not go very well. <laughs> I mean, we've seen a couple of teams try to force it in the past, and yeah, it usually doesn't go very well. I mean, it, no. it's not an easy site to hold. EXG was defending, they did not do a successful job. Rogue bulldozed them. I and mean, okay, one of the most important parts of that hold is admin office. Admin office is almost always easy for the attackers to take, right? Yes. Apart from that, you need to hold downstairs. But <laughs> the attackers can cl clear the way in through garage, and the problem is you have to stretch yourself from garage to admin office as a defensive team, so you can't really hold anything because you stretch too thin. Because, okay, let's say you're holding both garage and admin office. You okay. still have to hold the middle floor. So it's... Throwing this is not an easy thing to hold. So, yeah. Anyway, this round, here and now, Ion's going to take some damage, as you can see. And he still has two grenades. Play a skeleton key, so all the utility is going to be very useful. ADS has cleared out thanks to those Twitch drones. Great job, Hugzor, doing just that. And that's going to allow for Black Dragons to take control of Yellow Stairs, even though they are, are not in Yellow Stairs just yet. They have forced the defenders off of. Potential for the rotate back, but it uh, does not look like that's going to happen. As uh, you can see, Black Dragon's trying to cut off that rotation as much as possible from the skyline. The clash was completely ineffective, in my opinion, for... Uh Ints? Ints? Yep. Um, I like to switch off to the dock instead. More sustain. He's playing where Duds was playing previously inside of the bathroom just to watch this wall. Intact will be tasked with guarding the yellow stairs, which is where Ion had played previously. Now the Buck, who grabbed the 4K and was essentially the hero of the round for Black Dragons, finds himself very low HP already. We're 90 seconds through. That smoke is just going to hold that yellow stairs as best as he can. So this is a position that Hot and Cold found himself in for Dark Zero. It did an excellent job picking up oh. an awful lot of kills. I think Boar was anticipating a pick there. Doesn't find it. It's going to deal quite a bit of damage to him, though. There's Ion grabbing one kill, and Hugsword will find another. So Black Dragons will start things off in style, but Ion lost a tiny bit of HP and is now on a flashing low bar. Only five HP left for the buck. Opportunity to get reset here, though. Yes, the dock could also heal him. And Anything's possible. The dock on defense could indeed heal one of the attackers. It's not going to happen, though. Zion will go for the reset. Still potential for a heal, though. I mean, you know, it's possible. Michael, stop it. Ints in a good position to hold this out, especially in the last 44 seconds. Black Dragons, though, with the manpower advantage. That's the most important thing. Loading. It's quite the view. <laughs> GDN setting himself up to repel into B, and it's going to be really important that his smokes go in the right location. But we're getting low on time, and uh, it is of the essence. Evil Eye is still very likely in play, and there's probably one inside of the B side. It's going to be on the Ash to deal with that. Four going for a wide peek, and he's going to win the fight against Ion. Can he get another? No. Hugzord shuts him down. Drunk's going to refrag, though, onto Panico. It's still in a decent position, to denying the plant, at least for now. And here we go. Duds, a perfect rush there, and he's still alive, but he can't maintain that position, and Iblax will take him down. Black Dragons, another round. That's two in a row on the top floor. Doesn't look like Ints really know how to defend this. 3v1, you take out the Diffuse Planter, excellent. But you know that there's going to be two bodies there holding somewhere else. You had the Ash playing inside a cubby, you had the Twitch playing at the top of the yellow stairs, and that's a perfect crossfire opportunity where the Jaeger is not getting out of connector unless he goes over towards meeting room, in which case you just have one of those two people cover the, w cover the connector and you get the other to plant the Diffuser. Especially with how low Duds was, that Jaeger's not going to really be able to win that. 
short of a miracle. So Ince has two opportunities to be able to defend console office upstairs. They fail on both accounts, but they do come closer on that second time around. No surprise that they will run back down to the garage, which they looked much better and much more Defenders poised on. A big part of that is because that. you don't need to run a hard breacher when you're attacking console office upstairs. Black Dragons decided, hey, let's just bring utility rather than a Havana or a Maverick. With Thermite being banned, it's a lot more difficult to be able to take the garage downstairs with a Hibana or a Maverick. I'm actually kind of surprised that Black Dragons isn't opting to put a lot of pressure on the side of server because you can pull off a staff room and server side push and then a staff room take, then you can a garage wall take, especially knowing the lineup that Black Dragons is running with. You can ying in quite effectively and really cause a lot of chaos. But the way that Inst is setting up, they're anticipating a garage wall take though. So you could not just be able to use your utility better, but bypass a lot of the defense too. So. We'll see if Black Dragons decide to go for something a little bit different here in this round, or if they're going to commit themselves to the garage push this time as well. As you all saw in the first round, it did not work out very well for BD when they went for that take in through garage. They opened up the one drop down, but didn't utilize it, just went for a brute force in through the panel. But that bottleneck, again, oof, not easy. And uh, the Thermite Man working against BD, at least for now. But again, when they transition to defense, it'll be their boon. Hogsord, joining out the roamers on the top floor. Reloading. It's going to find the Jaeger, force him down to the bottom of Yellow Stairs, intact. Downstairs, it's overall, I mean, it's a pretty passive defense right now from Duds, all things considered. Yuke is going to take out Ion, though. Speaking of passive, the exact opposite going to happen here, as Yuke pushes his way up Visa Stairs to get that kill. And that's a lot of soft destruction just by the wayside on the side of BD, not having the skeleton key anymore. Ooh, that is not going to be easy. Mute Jammers are still in play, which means Iblox is now going to be the one who has to push into Piano to open up above the panel to shoot those Jammers. And he's pretty far from that objective at this point in time. Top floor control finally in the hands of BD, but it was defaulted away from by the defense about 30 seconds ago, so that's a little bit slow for BD. Yeah, and I mean, I think you touched on it very correctly. Losing the buck means the Piano is going to essentially be... No concern for Inst. You're going to have Ash likely up there. That's really going to be it. Everything else is going to have to come from Yellow Stairs and is going to have to come from Spiral Stairs because that pressure on the wall is now going to be gone. Ash still has two breaching rounds to be able to use at some point. Uh oh. But that's really it. Especially with Hugzord not running any breaching charges. Though Panico might have breaching charges on the Thatcher, but I highly doubt Black Dragons was thinking that far ahead when they came with this composition. Duds. Duds has somebody watching. So if Chase. Duds. If Duds does peek around this corner, the top of Visa stairs, he could possibly be a dead man. Look at this precision. Right now, from Black Dragons of Eye Blacks, he knows where the call is going to come from. Duds could make a cross here, actually. Considering that Eye Blacks is playing the pixel angle, it's really not inconceivable. If Duds were to sprint into projector, he would survive. The action, though, is mainly centered around, oh, Eye Blacks comes off the flank watcher just the right moment. That's going to leave a window for Duds to potentially capitalize upon, and he might just seize it, but he's lingering with 25 seconds left to go. He needs to do something now. Hugs are going to be using the Ying to push in through Garage. First match we've had today where Ying is actually going to be a factor. Drunks, though, is going to take him down as the smoke also does some damage. Duke going to take out Panico as well, so the attack just absolutely shredded. Another kill for the Evil Eye from Drunks. Absolutely insane Evil Eye usage here on the side of Instant. Combined with the gas canisters, lots of damage done indirectly. Wow. Not really much the Black Dragons could have done in that round. And again, I think you were right. It's because they committed to the garage panel take. It's just not... I, you don't have a Thermite. You banned Thermite. You did this. Black Dragons shot themselves in the foot here. I have to feel like if there was a little bit more access, maybe we would be seeing a different story. Though, to be honest, the utility is abundant for ints, and the counter utility play from Black Dragons is almost non-existent. It's one of those things where if you're scrimming against a team or playing against a team, and you know that they just don't do server takes in towards the staff area, that you can control the tempo of the garage by banning a Thermite. But like you pointed out, Black Dragons banned the Thermite, essentially handicapping Jack themselves on Garage. The good news for Black Dragons is that with the current six site, or rather six side rotation that we have, and the site rotation the way we have, 
that the defense can only go down to Garage twice if they win both times. That leaves four opportunities on other sites for Black Dragons to run without a Hard Breacher, as they've done now on every single console well, attack that they've had, to be able to rack up points. Black Dragons are perfect on both attacks on yeah, console office. The second time that they attacked it, it came much closer than it did the first time. It came down to the wire, in fact. But you're basically relying on Ints being able to continuously make progress on this site. That's not a given by any stretch of the imagination. Also, I have to be a little critical of that take from Black Dragons because they waited until the dying seconds to actually open up the wall and then push in. Black Dragons did a very poor job of getting information, of being able to drone out the map, of being able to control map control. The fact that they didn't know where Duds was for a long period of time, that's a problem. The fact that they lost the buck and they had no presence inside a piano, that's a problem. They didn't make the correction that was necessary. The Ying ended up being squandered, and as much as I admire how that Ying soldiered on, you know, there was no hope. She had two goo mines. She's getting tased by an evil eye, and amidst the toxic canister, she was a dead woman walking. There was also nobody playing at the back of white, so having uh, counter player utility is useless if there's no players to counter. The problem for the attackers were not players holding close. It was the utility on the defense. It's nothing really that Black Dragons was bringing to counter that utility. I mean, that's the story. So we'll see if they can change that as they go to uh, attacking the top floor again. Again, as Parker said, the last time, last times, the BD went here, they were able to win this attack. So this should be where they uh, put themselves up some rounds. And uh, if the trend continues, then they'll actually win this half for two, considering the only thing that Ince is capable of defending right now is the basement. How does Ince nobody. have nobody watching yellow at all, putting Hugzord in a position where he can try to lock down connector, look over towards console office. You see the bottom of the cubby is also shot out. And unless there's some cam or intel that's being relayed, this is free real estate. Is it free, Parker? It's absolutely free. Are they giving it away? There's a pool in the back, Michael. Just and Hugsword can just hold this connector. Uh, he does target. lose a fight to Yuke, at least for the time being. Yuke will just count his lucky stars that he's lost only about 30% of his HP. Panico sees an explosive go next to him, but it doesn't do all that much. The Thatcher's still positioned, watching the long desk. And this looks like we might actually have console control. The only person that could have possibly de-lodge or dislodge the position on Yellow Stairs was the Valkyrie of Boar, who pushed on up and immediately got spotted. GDN goes in for the plant, bold to have the Capitao go for it yet again. Very low on HP, but there you go. GDN felled by Boar. A great shot from Yuke onto Panico in bathroom, and look at this. Ince beautifully poised to keep this locked in. It'll be all up to Hugzord as he's in a 1v5 that he makes a 1v4 very quick. But he doesn't have that diffuser. He's got 10 seconds, pinned down inside of the bathroom, and nowhere to go. It takes three rounds, but finally Ince finds a victory on console office. And for their final defense, they'll be tasked with either Teller's archives or going to that main lobby floor. You know, you know what that was, Parker? It was free real estate. They gave it away, but it had asbestos and there were rats. Mm. Yeah, and uh, um, the foundation nobody, were just... No, rats, nobody likes rats. The foundation... Well, actually, you know, pet rats are pretty awesome. Why'd you have to do this? Anyway, the foundations were pretty brittle. Uh, they looked like they were crumbling. The bones just weren't there. So, unfortunately, Black Dragons were unable to renovate that. But no, anyway, the, the point I was trying to make there is it was a trap. Well done to Inst to set up a trap. It was a really juicy one. Black Dragons uh, assumed they just had full control of B, but the utility play from Inst, again, is really the star of the show. We were seeing that same exact thing the last time Inst went to the basement. In fact, both times that Inst went to the basement, what was the star? It was the evil eyes and the gas canisters from Inst. That was the same thing there. Yeah. Able to deny the plant and uh, draw out the dying seconds of the round and cause Black Dragons to panic, rush, and die. So, good job to Ince. Really uh, playing their opponent there. And because they were able to win at least one of their defenses on the top floor, now they're going to have to go to the middle floor. And I'm 
You know, I'm 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 kind of expecting honestly Black Dragons to be able to take this and put us to a, push us to a three three, considering the way that Ince has been playing. The only rounds that they've taken are rounds where Black Dragons has allowed Ince to push BD into a corner, and the <laughs> only fights Ince are really winning. Generally, okay, yeah, they won a couple that last round, but most of the time it, it comes down to the evil eyes and the gas canisters. So, if BD can get into just straight up fights, they're gonna have a much better time. And I think middle floor is one of the better sites for just that. But we'll see. Maybe Ince is gonna set up another trap and BD will far, fall for it. We'll, we'll have to wait and find out. I'm gonna be pushing his way downstairs, and he has the skeleton key, so he can do some damage from below. He's already denied the threat, or the potential threat, of the C4s that can come up through these drop downs, and from this position, he could potentially get some pretty free kills if his opponents aren't aware. I mean, there's a Jaeger on the board, so even though those hatches are open, there might be an ADS to net one of the frag grenades getting tossed from the buck, but no, you're absolutely correct. I'm intrigued to see the way that Black Dragons is going to approach this site in particular. Second floor control is pivotal. But right now, it appears that Black Dragons is clearing from the bottom up, which is not something that you see an awful lot on Consulate, especially not on this site. The easiest route in for a lot of teams, simple, take admin and then go from there. Because once you take admin, you're likely going to have somebody playing inside of projector, and then that's really going to be it. But it doesn't really appear to be the case at all. So here we have Ince just hanging on, and there's been very minimal contact. Nobody has run into each other. You still see Ince doesn't have any bodies on that bottom floor. At what point does Black Dragons read into this and try to take control of that second floor? Piece of control here for Black Dragons, and they already had downstairs, so that's a pretty big portion of the map that they had control of early on. That's thanks to Ion. Yuke's gonna take down Iblax though, so first kill the way of Ints. There you go. Yuke has really been landing his shots so far in this match, and getting rid of the Ash is just about as good as it gets in terms of frag potential, especially explosive frag potential, considering. And uh, Black Dragons keep letting these rounds come down to the dying seconds. That's going to hinder them quite a lot. Looks like it's going to stack up by the spiral staircase. Dud's able to take down Ion, and Parker is waving at me emphatically. Hugzord's going to take out Duds. So Black Dragons getting a little bit of control back, but it's not really going to be enough. All things considered, 30 seconds left. Oh, what a shot from Hugzord. That's two in a row for him. And that could potentially salvage the round, but Ince are still in a good position to deny the Diffuse plant. You can see, it'll be very passive play from both Intact and Boar. Drunk's trying to retake control of the top floor. It's gonna be Hugsword in that way, but oh, what has that just happened? A Diffuser plant. Drunks will get control of top floor once again, but Black Dragons in the post plant, perfect position. A missed headshot there from Panico must have hit the arm. Intact's gonna take down GDN though, and oh, Panico outside, eliminated by Boar. What a retake from Ince. It was all over, but Black Dragons just let it go. Excellent recovery there from Ince, and that will put them at 4-3. Four, 4-2, four, actually, as it turns out. I do not know how to count. <laughs> For people wondering when he said he's waving at you emphatically, a lot of people have asked in the in the past, like, how do you know when to keep talking? How do you know when to stop talking? So we have a variety of hand signals, most of which are just completely erratic gestures. But this time Parker was like, he was using both of his arms and his torso to like... It was like a flight. It's like one of those people like trying to direct a flight into land. Yeah, like, You got exactly. the plane coming in with the two wave, with the two like the wavers, those glowing. I thought he was are. gonna hit me for a while there. I was oh, like, I was, what letting, you... I was letting him keep the end of the round. So yeah, but was, usually we just so our hand signal for hey, you can have the end of the round is a palm face up, and you just kind of defenders. You just you, just, you kind of push the attack. poker chips on yeah. the table. You give it to the other person. Yeah, on over. Like yeah. you're going all in. You that's know, but... that's our let you can have it, but. But Parker was just, wow. I was going all in. He was going all He really wanted me to know that I could yeah, have the end of that is, round. That was his. You earned that round. Oh, thank you, Parker. Just, just as we saw Ince earn that round as well from the retake. I can't I think, believe they got away with that. I, I mean, I, I can't either, but Black Dragons, I think we're a bit too hasty to pull off that plant. They didn't have a good set of yes, post-plant in mind, and that's... You know, that's a big part of why they stumbled in the post plant. Yeah, Solid mistakes. And quite a bit of mistakes, right? So Ince poised to take at least one point here. Keep in mind, they are the only team in this region without a single victory on the season. So yeah, a win here would be very big. But 
Consulate has been one of the more defender-favored maps, so it's not unusual to see a team be able to take four rounds on defense. If that ends up working on the flip side, then we end up with a draw between these teams, which isn't terrible for Black Dragons, though obviously not, intended, uh, not an intended outcome, but it's even worse for Ints because they are currently sitting in the dreaded auto-relegation spot. What kind of a draw, Harper? Is it like a stick figure or a... I'm sorry. Thank you. Apologize to the viewers more than anything. I'm oh, sorry. Go. Black Dragons will be starting on the defense on Garage. Now we'll see how much Black Dragons <laughs> realized that this Thermite ban would, would aid them. I still think it's very interesting. I mean, Black Dragons might not run a Thermite on Consulate reliably. That could be it as well. I mean, we could, we could be arguing over this ban, which really doesn't impact them one bit. They, they just basically had to kind of hobble through their six rounds on attack in order to prove that Ince isn't going to be able to pull this off without the Thermite. Who knows? This is where we're going to stress test all of our theories. But I'm only sorry because you couldn't see his face. That's the only reason. Michael, I think I've rolled my eyes so much at you today that I have created enough energy to power this studio for the rest of the year. <laughs> That's accurate. Anywho. You're welcome, environment. So, Ints taking control of this first floor. Usually on Consulate, you're going to have bodies from the Defenders on that second floor and then on the first floor as well. It doesn't look like there's that much presence, though, from Black Dragons outside of the site. That's going to allow Ints to just have complete ownership of the hallway from Main Lobby. And then piano as well. That's where the IQ of drunks is going to be. IQ actually seemed very minimal pick rate so far today. So it's nice to have her here. Consulate does end up being a site where you see her very frequently. She can take out any mute jammers that might be in play. She can take out any bandit batteries. She can take out the Valkyrie cameras. There's lots of utility on Black Dragons that can be spotted by IQ's gadget. Duke, looking for the long angle to cut off the rotation. I Black's going to take out Drunk, so there goes the IQ. No use from that gadget, really, in this round. And Ints find themselves up against a wall, now suffering from that Thermite ban the same way their opponents did. With only 26 seconds left to go, Ints doesn't really have any real way to attack this bomb site. There is hole. There are holes in the garage, but they're not going to be very useful. Again, the bottleneck's going to be very important. GDN going to eat some damage, as will Ion. Hugzord and Panico able to put one on the board for each of them. It's just Duds and Boar now who have really no hope, but they're going to rush into the site. Boar will get one, and it's impactless. Duds as well able to get one equally impactless. And there you go. Black Dragons lock it out. Same way we saw Ince do on their first half. It's, uh, it's, uh, intact. Obviously not very happy about something there. Bug Cabana. Dud, Duds was in a position where he, if he didn't have the goo mine in his foot and there was only one or two members of, of Black Dragons left that he maybe could have walked away uh -huh. just by simply fragging out. But he has to stop for five seconds to pull that goo mine out of his foot. He can't run. He can't hide. Not much he can do. Are you sure he can't run, but he can hide? So Usually it's one or the other, Parker. Black Dragons have an, actually an excellent opportunity here to, you know, be able to take another round on console office and be all tied up if they feel like that ban paid off. Though you're not typically going to use hard breachers on any of these other sites. Black Dragons did run a Hibana when they were attacking Lobby, and that's usually just for any hatches that they need. Mm -hmm. Maybe if they want to be able to open up that bathroom wall, too, mm -hmm. Ince is going to be running a Hibana. So even though it might be a console office... Uh, Console off his defense, Ince is going to be careful and just bring a hard breacher out of necessity. I imagine that this Hibana will probably go in through admin, which was a part of the map that was neglected by Black Dragons on their attacks. Black Dragons tended to stay towards the console office windows. They took control of yellow stairs. They tried to take control of bathroom when they could, even though oftentimes Ince had a body playing in bathroom. I'm going to guess that we're going to see an admin take. Given this lineup, from Ints. They're probably going to try to put pressure on Long Desk. They're going to use the X Kairos to open up just a small portion of that wall. If there's anything left to open up, because you can see here from Panico that most of that wall's already been opened. And that could end up being a really bad situation for Ints to find themselves in because the only, it looks like what, two reinforcements over there? One reinforced panel? That's it. That's the only part of the wall that is going to be looked at from that Hibana. 
BD going to be contesting admin office here. Uncommon. But it's not looking like an admin office take. Luckily for Black Dragons, they have the Valkyrie, and there is no IQ on the other side. So, easy information, says Ion, as he calls out the B-side attack. I'm sure because of that camera, there will be a rotation sooner than normal as ints continue to set themselves up for a B assault. Or waiting for the run out on the A balcony. Potentially net a pretty easy kill if he holds this angle long enough. It does look like uh, Panico is itching for a fight. It's just stacking up, waiting to throw in their utility. I don't think that's going to work very well because the way that uh, Black Dragons are set up, it's, it's the same exact defense that Ince was putting out, which was Evil Eye and B. Gas canisters ready to throw into B. If they go for B, we'll just play passive and deny them with utility. I kind of ran a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Evil Eye, though, taken out as it is placed poorly. Easy for a grenade to land on that window. Could have taken a note from Ince and put it on the wall that you can't really land a grenade next to, but they didn't. Because of that, Black Dragons have lost one piece of utility that would have otherwise held onto the B site, making this defense so much more difficult. The Valkyrie of Ion potentially could still go downstairs and deny with C4 from below. Very likely still a Valkyrie cam in the site. Looks like Drunks has disconnected, or is moonwalking. Either way, not a factor in this round. GDN gonna miss a gas canister, that's really important. Hugzord able to take out Drunks as he is immobile. Goes for a second one, cannot land the SMG shots. The smoke grenades and gas canisters are not going to be enough to deny the defuse plant. A flurry of kills from both teams as Yuke gets a Claymore kill onto Ion, attempting to run out and take out these repellers. More and intact. Still alive, attack trying to deny the disable, but there's no one actually on the attack to do that anymore, and it's a stick from Black Dragons. Oh no, says Ince, they cannot hold on to that diffuser in the post plant. And it's an easy one there for BD to clean up. The trap works out on both sides of the fence. Second poor post plant that we have seen here, as I imagine we're gonna wait for the call for Ince, uh oh, and it's gonna be another rehost. Yeah, so it was I... it, it was drunks that I think he lost connection in the middle of that round. This will once again be another admin decision here because typically teams are only granted one rehost per map, but that's something that is obviously at the mercy of the admins to be able to make that call. Is this from the same team? I actually don't know which team called for the rehost to start with. I can't Nor remember I. who it was. I, I, truth be told, I, I cannot. It was a while ago, so. I, I cannot, yeah, I cannot recall. Either way, it is a it is a choice of the admins, and so we'll see what they do. Um, yeah, we'll get them in here. Anyway, we're going to be getting everybody back in. The round count very likely will be 4-4. Four, four. Uh, Drunks did disconnect in the middle of that round, but the action had already, actually it wasn't even the middle of that round. It was like towards the end. The action had already started. There were frags were still already, already on the board. There's, there's so. no way that they're going to change yeah. the, the outcome of that, obviously. I mean, yeah, pro probably not. So should be 4-4 four, four when we get back into things. Uh, good job to BD bouncing back there mm. uh, as they go into the defensive half. Hmm. What? I smell burnt sugar. There's coffee. Oh. There's a coffee machine in here. Oh, yeah. I was wondering what it was. I just, it smells like burnt sugar. It doesn't smell like coffee. It smells like coffee. <laughs> no, it really. It 100% smells like coffee. You know, maybe it's the uh, the burnt sugar, well, the coffee mixing with the uh, monster. That's a ghastly mix together. Yeah, but there are people who do that, Parker. I don't want to meet those people. I've met those people. <laughs> All right. Black Dragons ties things up. Looking like Did they're they? much better on defense. Mm -hmm. Ince is able to get the plant down. It's the second bad post plant that we've seen in the last three rounds. Black Dragons recovers. They end up sticking the plant, as you said, as Ince could not get somebody there to watch the diffuser in time. Now, you've one garage and you've one console office. You're likely going to go to lobby unless Black Dragons decides to pull Teller's archives out. And then we go back down to garage. Despite the fact that they left the first half trailing, this is actually an excellent spot that Black Dragons finds themselves in. And this Thermite ban could be disproportionately affecting Inns way more than BD. And because of this, Inns has now run Hibana both times, and I think it really speaks to Inns maybe just not being comfortable with how to attack console. I mean, it's, possibly that it's, effect it, it's possible that it's affecting Inns just as much as it affected BD. I mean, if we look at the, uh, the rounds here, both of the defenses of the basement for Inns were successful, and now we're seeing that trend continue as... 
BD are able to defend the basement. So both teams having luck on the basement. Why? Because there's no thermite. I mean, this, yeah. this is the way it's always been on consulate. If there's no thermite, it's going to be hard to attack the bottom floor. And you can bring certain tools to alleviate the pressure that you find yourself in, not being able to open up the garage panel. But that is the main way to attack the site. I also thought there was going to be more of an admin take from uh, from the attackers on Insta's side, but there was not. And in fact, Admin has been largely ignored for most of this matchup. It's been very interesting to see that. It's interesting that you point that out because I could, you could easily now, I, I didn't think about that, but you, knowing that now, you can easily attribute that to why the attack is not having the most success because, you know, Almost everybody attacks from admin office, especially on like a top floor take. Yep. It gives you such a good platform to launch your attack into the site. Why wouldn't you? Everybody's been going for a B site attack, but it's that is so counterintuitive for a number of reasons. I mean, how have the defenders been denying the plant, been denying the round outright utility? I mean, it's just been the evil eyes, the gas canisters, the C4, etc. It's it's been a totally utility defender based um, hold so far, whether on the bottom floor or the top floor. Why not attack from admin office and you know? Go around the utility. Yeah. yeah. Good way of putting it. Yeah. Right now, the ability to lock down a defense on the console windows seems to be working out quite well. Keep in mind that on their very last defense, Ints finally figured it out. It took them two times before that. Now Black Dragons have figured it out. A lot of that plays around how do you police meeting hall? This could have actually been more of a meeting slash projector style attack until we saw Ints realize that Black Dragons had opened up most of that wall by Long Desk. And after they saw that, they said, let's pivot. Let's go towards the console office side of things. Also, Valkyrie was playing inside of the little staff area, looking into admin office as well. Yes. The overall setup from both teams has been solid on the defensive side. The attack strategy strategies in general have been pretty lackluster. It is interesting to see. I, I think it's just a little bit of a misunderstanding of what the opportunities are or that are available and uh, trying to reach for a goal that is inaccessible. While on the attacking team, the coordination isn't exactly the problem as much as the general strategy that is being employed by both teams. And now that Inst finds themselves on attack, they're the ones who are going to struggle because, I mean, it's bad for both teams. They're both playing the same way. There is like very, like, I actually for a second forgot that we were watching uh, Black Dragons on defense when they were starting the second half because I was like, they're set up the exact same way as Ince. I it, it took me a second when I first saw it <laughs> because it was identical. So anyway, um, we are just about ready. Nope, but we're going to need another, we're gonna need another rehab. We're not ready. So, so that's unfortunate. Yeah, we we loaded in and it was Un unfortunately we will need another rehost. So we're gonna we're gonna see how long this is uh, gonna take to get everybody back in the game. So unfortunate, unfortunate. It happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. But uh, yeah, so where did we leave off? Oh yeah, so the strategies from both teams have been identical, and that's really interesting. We see that happen from time to time, uh, especially. Uh, with teams that are both, you know, struggling to really get their way up on the leaderboard. Usually if you have just one set strategy and you repeat that set strategy over and over and over again, you become predictable and thus easy to defeat. Mm -hmm. um, it usually also will aid the defense if you are the being, uh, like even if the defense has just got the same setup, if you're the attacking team, you're the one who as a, stag as a stagnant uh, side is going to falter and be uh, hit the most by Lack of diversity. Oh. Oh, that hurts. Here. All right, we're getting the lobby set up for you uh, yet again, so we can uh, we can go in and hopefully get things underway quickly. What would you like to say? Do you have a microfiber wrap like a? Clean your glasses. Yeah, in my bag. No. Oh. Are my glasses dirty? Yeah, a little bit on the right one. Yeah, they're actually kind of dirty. The left one's fine, I think, for the most part. I couldn't quite see from that angle. Mm, they could be better. Yeah. Does that get distracting? I don't have glasses. Not really. No? I heard that you needed glasses. I do. Mm -hmm. I do need those. Mm -hmm. No. But I don't have them. 
All right. The cameras are blurry. <laughs> and they're like three, only, four meters. If there was somebody on our staff who happened to have a thing or two about optometry. I don't know anybody who fits that description, Parker. Mm. Maybe he'd be Lebanese. Maybe he'd have a beard. Yeah. Maybe his name's Gasson. Maybe he is Gasson. Maybe he has another name. Who are these fictional characters? I know. It's wild, eh? Mm-hmm. Um, so as we get everybody back into the lobby here, um, right now, if you look at the way that both of these teams have played, there's been a lot of sloppiness on both sides. Yep. Um, and I think that's really been one of the defining factors here for both of these teams. The fact that you're able to get post like plants down and then just bail out in the post plant obviously does not speak to the strategy that you have. And the problem is, in, in that particular in, in that particular defense right there for Black Dragons. On that particular defense, Ince had lots of opportunity to watch the diffuser. It was not like they got caught scrambling out of the plant. It took a while for Black Dragons to be able to overrun them. Are you all right? Seriously. I'm good. Okay. Well, we're loading in. We don't know if we're going to have another rehost, but we're loading in right this second, so it's possible that we will actually have gameplay for you. All right. It looks like everything is good. Hooray. Yay. Hooray. So there we go. Into the game we go. Um, you said sloppy. I would agree with that. I think more, though, because here's the thing. Usually when we say sloppy, it's a little it's a little bit of a different sloppy. Usually when we say sloppy, what we mean is the teams aren't running strats, and they're just kind of uh, going for it. And it's random, and it's chaotic. Um, that's not necessarily happening right now. Actually, both teams are running strats, but it's the same strat every single round from both freaking teams. And the here's the crazy part. Attackers. On both halves. So BD has the same defenses, Ince has the same defenses, and it's, you know the same for attack. It's just it's you know it's weird. It happens from time to time. It's just weird. Um, the predictability is making it I think um, defender sided because they're the ones who will come out on top in that exchange just in general, no matter what. Because if you know where the attack is coming from, oh, isn't it easy to defend against it? So strat review. We're going to the middle floor. I don't know if they can hear the clap. Left, I heard it. He heard it. I heard it. Oh I heard it an awful lot. Five seconds was it go. that loud? Well, I mean, I'm sitting right next to you. New True. But we have headphones Attackers on. And they're not like over ears. They're like on ears. So yeah. They really take up that sound. Well, you know, I guess it depends on if it's open or closed when it comes to over ears. Interesting. So Panico's going to throw these cameras outside, and on Ince's side, there will be no IQ here to be able to spot out these cameras. So they will have to just do the work with the drone on their own. Now, with this being a lobby defense, we see at least one member of Black Dragons in striking position over on that second floor. You will likely have two to three bodies Attackers from the defense up on that second floor the waiting. And they have another one. Hugsword on yellow. Slow going here, but lots of information for BD. So this is definitely going to work the favor of the defenses. Ains are looking to get some kind of control, but uh, they're slow on it as well. This is actually interesting. Parker, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're witnessing an admin office take right now. Drunks is going to get the first kill. He's down on the floor. There's a potential for a refrag. One gas canister is all it's going to take, and Drunks is gone. Great job, GDN, capitalizing on that opportunity. But all the while, the attackers have been clearing, you guessed it, into admin office. This is the first time we're seeing an admin office take, as far as I can recall. Possible that we saw it last time we were on the middle floor defense in the first half, but still, not very often that this happens. Despite that, though, you're going to see an exchange in favor of the defense as two attackers go down. That's the buck and the ying. It's a lot of utility that goes down as well for Ince. And Black Dragons have been looking to try and keep this close, at least on their defenses. And it's working out quite well. Ince abandoning the hard breach as well. Interesting to note. My gosh. I don't think the lead. Oh, there you go. Ion does spot the drone and then immediately is able to help get the smoke in play as GDN. It's an impact, it appeared from Ion, unless yep. <laughs> and Tuds gets away safely inside of Admin. GDN going for the Marathon Miles, he'll head down to the garage and head down at least towards the bottom of Spiral Stairs to rotate on out. Fun fact, GDN should be dead, but he is not. It's unable to seize the opportunity, and uh, that's unfortunate. Good information again from this Valkyrie camp that sees one of the attackers outside. Able to get that 
call out to the rest of BD. High Blocks might actually be looking for a run out. We've got two attackers outside. They gave up on the Adam and Take. They said, heck that, we're going elsewhere. Bora looking to repel up to Piano. And he's going to be able to hold these windows, given the fact that you've got two bodies playing over by Piano. He finds GDN, say goodbye to the smoke, and that's all the entry denial onto the main doorway down. Yuke finds Eye Black, so Black Dragons loses their advantage. Hugsword gives his position away, vaults in through bathroom. Ion takes out Yuke's 2v2. Duds very, very low, but Bora is also there. The Alda too much to handle, and Duds a mobile as he's getting the plant down inside of Piano. What? All it takes what? is for somebody to know his position. But where are Ion and Hugzord? Duds with the R4C in hand holding this tight corner unless it's a joint peak. This is a very winnable position for Duds. He's going to hold off. He'll be tested here on the lesion around the corner. Goes prone on top no. of that diffuser. Looks the wrong way. What? No, Ion doesn't see him. And now the Maestro <laughs> goes in and it's an easy closeout for Ince. And Black Dragons plays that as poorly as they could. <laughs> No information and no ability Parker. to fight back in the post plant. Man. They walked by him while he was planting Parker. It just it just kept getting worse and worse for BD. That is hilarious. They let him plant and then they let him sit on top of the planted diffuser which is buzzing and making flashes and they just couldn't hit him once yeah it was a pretty comical misread if i'm being honest with you you know um that was a comedic round humorous it, it wasn't it wasn't so much humorous as it was more extremely bomb. unfortunate Unfortunate. From, unfortunate is a good way of putting it. The way that Black Dragons handled that final 10 seconds in the round was extremely unfortunate. I just thought it was really funny. I, I feel bad for Black Dragons and all their fans because that was honestly a huge mystery. Uh, and, it, and it really was one of a kind. Uh, again, it started all going wrong when we saw the Maestro walk away from the Ash. Didn't even check piano. Could have had clean line of sight onto the planter for a solid five seconds. Did not even try to look into piano. But uh, following that, the reaction from Black Dragons was incredibly slow. I think the, the problem was they must not have had any Valkyrie cams or evil eyes in the sight, but I find that incredibly unlikely. I, Valkyrie and Maestro both, there must have been some piece of utility in either of the sites. It didn't matter which one. If it was in the main lobby, great. They can call, hey, they're not planning main <laughs> lobby, check piano. But either there wasn't any information being gathered or it was poorly communicated because Black Dragons actually looked straight up blind in the last seconds of that round. They literally were. They, uh, in terms of in terms of info, they were completely blind. They had no idea where the ash was. How did Ash get to sit there for four seconds he, in the oh, plant down when you had just, two bodies watching the main doorway? Just nobody was watching piano. Maestro is in bathroom hallway. Just move your mouse a little bit to the right. Yeah. Rounds over. Yeah. Unfortunate. Well, it is what it is. Now Ince are finding themselves up one. And Ince now in a position where they have to attack garage, which Black Dragons looked good on before. Yep. Oh, it's important to note that last round was the first round that Ince has managed to take in the second half. Yes, that is correct. It was uh, it was everything shaping up for Black Dragons to be able to hold on. They were looking good. You hang on to that round. You go up to five. You end up with Garage. You possibly move to match point if you win that the one as well. Located a bomb. I just, you just took a sip of your coffee and the way you were doing it, following what you said, I saw the Kermit meme. It's, it's the, too bad it was coffee, not yeah, tea. Yeah, it's the tea. That's fine. Yeah. Well, it's in lead right now, but I got to be honest, I don't expect them to continue this. Uh, it would be very difficult for them to pull off another win. That last one was sheer luck. And, I mean, yeah, an excellent clutch. Definitely from, I believe it was Dutch, but also a huge amount of luck <laughs> that he was allowed to get that. Uh, following that, they haven't really had any success, or actually prior to that, they haven't had any success on the attacking side. So... It's likely that BD are going to be able to lock this out, but now it's just a lot more difficult than it would have been otherwise. Yeah. So this information being held 
with this evil eye cam will be able to give quite a bit of knowledge and pass it along, but ints, what an what? entry! Intact, Duds, and you all getting one. Shut down by Hugzord a second for Duds. Panico will be tasked with trying to go after a retake. He heads Duds, a Duds on yellow stairs, but Yuke rotates on in through that smaller office right next to the staff area, and that'll actually push Ince on the match point. And despite the loss on console office, this is three rounds in a row that Ince have been successful in getting that diffuser down, looking like the much better team. Guess so who was wrong? This guy. You can't see it, but I'm pointing at myself. Uh, turns out Ince absolutely lethal on attack. That last round, <laughs> about as one-sided as it gets. The Ying Candel is well utilized. Now, here's the curious thing. Black Dragons, the way they played that basement was not great. Not great at all. We, in the past, we had been seeing a lot of more passive strategy on the defense of the bottom floor. Nobody playing behind White Van, for example. But because there was somebody by White Van, because there were players by Pipes, and because all these players were blind, thanks to the Ying Candel is being placed surgically and precisely. It was an easy sweep up for Ince. Very well done on that attack. Really have to hand it to him. Now, BD are gonna go back downstairs. And here's the kicker. They're just playing for a draw at this point. Need to get two rounds in a row. We'll see if they can make it happen. Only that rehost needs to kind of come alive. Yeah, I think that was, uh, I mean, it obviously wasn't intentional. Um, no, but drunks, they come alive. Drunks dropping out. I believe it was drunks. On it the was finger drunk, that yeah. dropped out. Yeah. Obviously gave them a bit of motivation. It's that's kind of a funny thing with rehosts is that it allows you to reset. Now keep in yeah, mind that on land board teams board. have the opportunity to pause. That's not Five available online. Not that a rehost is used in a position for you to pause, yeah. but while everything is getting set up, you have the opportunity to take a couple minutes, reassess, calm down if you're angry, get in your groove. Yeah, try and fix things. Also worth noting is that the coach can talk to you throughout an entire, Correct. throughout the entirety of Absolutely. an online match. So your coach being able to say anything he wants to you during an online match is really great uh, when you compare it to uh, offline matches where the coach can't say a darn thing unless he's in the middle of a pause. So those tactical timeouts being very powerful on land, but not necessary per se online. The only thing that you're missing out on, again, is that momentum break. But uh, your coach is always there, so. Or at least for some teams, not all teams. Not everybody has a coach that's always sitting behind the team. Anyway. <laughs> Ince, match point. A lot on the line here for them, looking for their very first victory so far in Latin America, as they have gotten one point on a draw and that dreaded auto-relegation spot still exists. Black Dragons will go back down to the garage. Did not handle the attack from Ince all that gracefully in the previous round. Stark contrast to their very first defense on the garage, all the way back in round number seven, as things tend to work out quite well. Interesting that Black Dragons is not bringing any breach denial, so that garage wall will be opened up with ease. I mean, there's a Thatcher, so it would have been unlikely, but still, you can add a layer, right? Why not? It's not going to be there, though. EMPs will go elsewhere, try and out, clear out other pieces of utility. For example, the ADSs. Ion, though, will be spawning out somebody. Looks like by Visa office or in that area, maybe by the Visa stairs. Trying to call that out to his team. Duds going to take out Panico. Ash doing some good work already in this round. Ion a little distracted by this player. <laughs> He's just able to give that info, which is great because Black Dragons finds themselves down by one. So if they're going to be able to try to cut off the push from Ince, the more information they have, it, they're better. And that's exactly what yeah. Ion is doing. Attackers have Absolutely agree. Just watching over on the server side of things. So game is on the line at the moment for Ince, and they have an advantage already. Black Dragons banned out the Thermite in hopes that they would fare better on defense. And after two good rounds, well, the tides appear to have largely turned. It's not a lot of entryways into this garage, but Intact is going to try to cut the site in half. It's confronted by an evil eye cam as the plant goes down. Trying to oh, take no. out the evil eye cam, doesn't get it. It's a rally from Black Dragons. Answered back by Ince with Hugzord and GDN there to try to hold off the final 15 seconds. Three members of Ince in position with Drunks amidst the toxic canister, getting the plant down. Can we go for four rounds in a row? Four Ince, GDN pushes on up, takes out Yuke. Another diffuser goes down and the post plant is exactly 
what Ince needs to survive in. And with the garage being a very difficult site to retake, this is going to fare very well for Ince, providing that the diffuser is in a position where you can cover it from the exterior. It's going to fall on duds and drunks. Hugsword realizes that a run out through yellow stairs is not really possible, but GDN takes out drunks. Oh no, how do you put yourself in harm's way? Plant going down, Duds beheads GDN, and now the maestro of Hugsword will have to try to watch the diffuser. Duds can push on in. Here's the maestro getting it. It's a formality as Duds will claim the final kill, and Ince will grab their very first victory of the season. The final game in the first half. They looked mighty good on attack. They looked mighty good on defense. Ince was the better team today. That's why they'll take it, 7-4. If I'm not mistaken, that's the second clutch for Duds. Excellent play on Ash. An excellent win there for Ince. And well deserved. I am honestly surprised. I mean, a big part of that was the Thermite Band for Black Dragons. It really worked against BD. Um, I think that Ince made better use of BD's attack ban, which is the worst thing that could possibly happen to you, especially when you have such a polarizing ban as a Thermite on constant. Incredible that after the rehost, Duds in three rounds put up eight kills on top of the contributions that he's able to make prior to that. Obviously, really pulling his weight for the team. But yeah, really good match. Ince grabbing three points that they need. They'll finish the first half with four. That's not an awful lot, but at least it's points that you can get when you take them, or you take what you can get. That leaves us with Red Devils versus Pain Gaming as our very final matchup to conclude Latin America for the first half of the season. Interestingly enough, Red Devils came in through Challenger League. They've improved as a team. They got some pretty impressive victories. They beat Team Liquid, for example. And we're going to toss to a break. And then when we come back, we'll get to that match. Red Devils versus Pain Gaming. We'll send us off in just a couple minutes.